All right, uh, let's finish up section 10.2. All right, um, similar triangles. They have the same shape, but they are not necessarily the same size. Same shape, not necessarily the same size. So that's not what I intended to do. Let's see if I can go back. Oh, there we go. Um, same shape, not necessarily the same size. The angles are equal. Angles are equal. That's important. But the sides may or may not be the same length. Um, corresponding angles are the angles that have the same measure in two different triangles. And corresponding sides are the sides opposite the corresponding angles. Okay. So um, here is what we mean. Um, so let's suppose I have a um, triangle. Don't know if I'm going to be able to draw this. Um, and then I have one that is um, bigger like that, but it has the same shape. But it is bigger. So this angle corresponds to this angle and they would be the same. So if this were, th um, let's do 40 degrees, then this one would also have to be 40 degrees, okay? Um, this angle corresponds to this angle and they have to have the same measure right here. These two angles have to match and these two angles have to match like that. All right, so that's what they're talking about. Um, when, uh, when two triangles are similar, their corresponding sides are proportional. Um, so if you take a look, um, this side uh, corresponds to this side because it's opposite this angle, all right. Um, so notice that um, this side right here is twice as big, two times as big as that side right there. Hope I said side, I meant side. This side is twice as big as this side here. If you look at the other sides, this one and this one correspond, and this one is also two times bigger, and this one and this one also two times bigger. So the bigger triangle, all of the sides are two times bigger in this particular example than the smaller. Or if you want to do it a different way, um, this these sides are half as big as the larger triangle. Either way, um, we'll get you to the same place. All right. Now, the thing with, um, uh, there's different ways that they can set up uh, similar triangle problems. Um, they can set up similar triangle problems where they have the triangles, um, you know, drawn separately like that. Or that's not what I meant to do. There we go. Or they can set up similar triangles that are drawn inside of each other, like this. Okay, so um, this angle in the big triangle matches this angle in the small triangle because it's the same angle. Um, this side right here. Um, will uh, correspond to this side right there. This angle is going to match this angle. This angle is going to match this angle. This side, this one, is going to correspond to that one. Um, and this side will correspond to that one. All right. Or they can set up um, a problem like this. 
Um, of the three ways to set it up, I personally think this is the most difficult, but what you look for is um, the corresponding angles um, and you look for the corresponding sides. Okay, so we know that this angle is uh, the same measure as this angle, which means that this side and this side are proportional. So we'll do, let's do small um, over large. And you could do large over small, it really doesn't matter, you get to the same place, but we'll just, we gotta be consistent. So if we do small over large on the left, we have to do small over large on the right. So on the small um, triangle, that would be five inches. And on the larger angle, that would be eight inches. Okay. Now, we also know that these two angles have to be the same because they're vertical angles, which means that the sides opposite, right there, they have to be um, proportional. So, or uh, corresponding, Th these are my corresponding sides. So, um, I, started with the small triangle on top. So this is from the small triangle, that's my seven. And my large triangle is X right there. And because it's a proportion, we are going to cross multiply five times X is five X. And eight times seven is uh, 56. And I don't know how they're going to want that um, answer in my math lab. I would prefer an improper fraction like this. Um, so I'm not sure how they're going to do it. Let me see. Um, they divided and got a decimal. Um, so there you go. Approximately, is that going evenly? I think so, 11.2 inches. Uh, Pythagorean theorem, um, this is a proof of the Pythagorean theorem, which I'm not gonna talk about. Um, but if you um, have the hypotenuse, that's the longest side, and that is C. It's always the side opposite the 90 degree angle. Um, if you have a right triangle, it has to be a right triangle. I don't know if I said that, right triangle. We square one leg, that's called a leg, when we have a right triangle. We square the other leg, we add those two together. You have to square first and then add. That equals the square of the hypotenuse. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right, so um, we know um, the two legs. So this is nine, this is 12. So it doesn't matter which leg you start with, um, as long as these are both legs and the hypotenuse is on the um, other side of the equal sign. So it has to equal the hypotenuse squared, okay? So we're gonna, remember you have to square first. Nine squared is 81. 12 squared is 144. We're gonna add these together and offhand, I don't know, let's see, five to 225. Um, now, a lot of students kind of mess up by not taking the square root. Um, this is C squared. The square of the hypotenuse is 225, but we are looking for just the hypotenuse itself. So we need to take the square root and the square root of 225 should be 15. And let's check. And there it is. The hypotenuse would be 15. All right, there you go.